Welcome to What is Objectivism Part 1. In this segment, I will briefly define capitalism, explain the government's role in laissez-faire capitalist society, and discuss morality and values. Recently, capitalism has been under various attacks, not just from the left, but from the right as well. I'm here to defend and define capitalism, not as the Republicans define it, not as the Libertarians define it, and most certainly not as the Democrats define it, but as Ayn Rand defines it, and as the Founding Fathers of America tried to, but only partially succeeded in defining it. First off, what is capitalism? Capitalism is a social system based on the recognition of individual rights, including property rights, in which all property is privately owned. True laissez-faire capitalism requires that state and economy remain separate, just for the same reasons that church and state are separate. This is to prevent the government from forcing their agenda in the marketplace. The only entities that should be allowed to control what the marketplace looks like are the private individuals that buy and sell there. So what does the recognition of indiv individual rights mean? It means that every man has the inalienable right, right meaning the freedom to act, to use his own judgment and all that that may entail. However, of course, you may not act in order to deter or take away this right from another individual. If man wishes to be free and wishes to exist peacefully with one another, this must be recognized first. The recognition of individual rights banishes the initiation of physical force as a means with dealing with one another. Since the initiation of physical force would be banished, there must be an agency that deals with and punishes this evil, and, or, in other words, an agency that deals in self-defense. This is where the government comes in. The government's only role is to protect individual rights. The government acts as an agent to an individual's right to self-defense. They do this by being strictly limited to offering military, courthouses, and police services. Military to protect individuals from foreign attacks, courts to protect individuals from fraud and or physical uh, corrosion, um, and police to protect individuals from internal attacks. The government would not receive payment for these services through taxation but through voluntary donations and or service charges. Since, mo since all property would be privately owned, police officers would, for the most part, be privately contracted, just like private security officers are today, with the police officer being held responsible for any unjustified arrests or any other unjustified actions. Courthouses, again, um, would be paid via service charges. Of course, these service charges would vary depending on the crime committed. Um, in general, uh, the plaintiff would uh, pay the entire court fee since he is the one seeking justice. Um, the defendant would be placed on trial. If the defendant is found guilty, then he pays his half of the fee to the plaintiff along with the other fines that he owes the plaintiff. Um, of course, if the defendant is not found guilty, um, then he doesn't pay anything and he would be received compensation at the sake of the plaintiff's expense um, for the time spent in the courthouse. A military would be paid via for for donations, strictly donations, everybody would donate to the military. Um, and if, uh, again, they don't exist to go through and ravage other countries. Uh, they exist solely pr to protect individuals for, and their property from foreign, uh, from foreign invasion, invaders. Uh, however, of course, if there is a threat looming that requires overseas action, um, they could create some sort of bill and ask that it be paid for before the actions take place or as the action is taking place, you know, give the amount of money that they need. Um, however, this is all, I mean, we obviously don't live in a laws I fair capitalist society, so this is just a brief overview of how the, these things would be paid for. Um, and if you doubt that people would voluntarily pay for the military or courthouses and or police officers, uh, go ahead and recheck your premise. These services act as an insurance measure. Um, if you don't pay for these services, you simply do not receive them. If you don't want your business protected or your house protected, then that's fine. Um, you know, it won't be. If you don't want to prosecute the person who stole your television set, you aren't forced to. If you don't want to protect yourself from the possible, you know, from possibility of a nuclear or terrorist attack, no one is going to tell you that you must. The morality of this is that you're free to use your own judgment to determine what is good for you, that no one else is there to force you into choosing what is best for you. However, there will be people, as people are free, who will try to persuade you one way or the other. Um, however, it's up to you to use your own rational faculty to determine the validity of those arguments and make up your own choice based upon your own deduction. Um, this brings us to morality. Morality is a code of values that guides a man's choices or actions. Ethics discovers and defines this code. The question is not what particular code of values should man accept, 
But the question that has to be answered first, and I'm paraphrasing Ayn Rand here, um, is does man need values at all, and why? Uh, first off, we need to define what value, what a value is. A value is that which one acts to gain and or keep. In other words, an entity capable of acting to achieve a goal in the face of an alternative. If alternatives do not exist, there can be no goals or values. I quote from Gon, uh, John Galt's speech and Atlas Shrugged, There's only one fundamental alternative in the universe, existence or non-existence, and it pertains to a single class of entities, to living organisms. The existence of anim inanimate matter is unconditional. The existence of life is not. It depends on a specific course of action. Matter is indestructible. It changes its form, but it cannot cease to exist. It is only a living organism that faces a constant alternative, the issue of life or death. Life is a process of self-sustaining and self-generated action. End quote. Since one can only keep on living by a constant process of self-sustaining action, the goal of that action, the ultimate value, which in order to keep must be gained through its every moment, is life. Life is the standard for all values. That which furthers life is the good. That which threatens life is the evil. However, if someone invents a cure for your life-threatening disease and then refuses to give it to you for free, this does not mean that you are justified in killing him and stealing the cure he invented. If he hadn't invented it, you would still be in the same boat. He is not threatening your life. In fact, he's doing the opposite. Just because something exists that if you were to have, you would be better off, doesn't mean that you have the right to simply take it. The existence of comforts do not threaten your life simply because you do not have the means to access them. It is only an ultimate goal, i.e. life, an end in itself, that makes the existence of values possible.